Next to water, proteins are the most abundant substances in nearly all cells, which account for about 15% of a cell's overall mass and for almost half of a cell's dry mass. In the 1800s, Johann Smolder came up with the name protein, a term derived from the Greek word proteos, which means of first importance. This indicates the central role that proteins play in living organisms. Proteins are a very important class of food. Molecules, because they provide an organism not only with carbon and hydrogen, but also with nitrogen and so forth. Proteins are indispensable components of all living things where they play a crucial role in all biological processes. There are proteins that form the structural components such as the cartilage in our ears, muscles, hair, and skin. Wool, silk, feathers, and horns of animals are also made of proteins. There are also proteins, which we call enzymes, that regulate biological processes like digestion and cellular metabolism. Other proteins like hemoglobin and myoglobin transport oxygen in the blood and muscle. These are just some of the proteins that play a cru crucial role in biological processes. There are many types of proteins with many different functions, but they are all made from the same building blocks, which we call amino acids. So regardless of the origin of the proteins or their biological function, they are all polymers made of amino acids chemically bound to each other. The name suggests amino acids are composed both of an amino group and a carboxylate group. There are a lot of amino acids existing in nature. However, there are only 20 amino acids commonly found in the protein of living organisms. And we refer to these amino acids as the standard amino acids or the alpha amino acids. The carboxyl and the amino group are attached to the alpha carbon as well as the side chain represented by R. What else can you notice from the general structure of an amino acid? That's correct. It has four different groups attached to the central carbon atom which make it chiral, meaning it has handedness. With few exceptions, the amino acids found in nature and in proteins are L-isomers. Same with the case of monosaccharides, nature favors one mirror image over the other and in case of proteins or amino acids, the L-isomers are the ones favored. Now, if you will look at this, you would know the handedness or the chirality of the amino acids by looking at the position of the amino acid or the amino group in the amino acid so in alanine since the amino group is on the left then this one is the l isomer now what is the nature of the side chain the side chain which re is represented by the r distinguishes an alpha amino acid from each other it varies in size shape charge acidity functional groups present hydrogen bonding ability, and chemical reactivity. The polarity of the R group is an important characteristic and is the basis for classifying amino acids. Now, what are the classes of amino acids? So, we have four. First, we have the polar neutral amino acids. Here are the seven polar neutral amino acids. We have serine, threonine, tyrosine, tryptophan, cysteine, asparagine, and glutamine. And if you will see, they can be represented by a three letter or a one letter or a one letter symbol. So for serine, it can be represented as SER or an S. Polar acidic amino acids are the second class of amino acids. And we have two. We have aspartate or the aspartic acid and glutamate or the glutamic acid we have the polar basic amino acids we have histidine lysine and arginine the last ones are the non-polar neutral amino acids and if you will look at their side chain for example for glycine the side chain is a hydrogen for alanine, the side chain is a methyl group, which is also a nonpolar substituent. 
The acid-base properties of amino acids. Amino acids are white crystalline solids in their pure form. However, most amino acids are not very soluble in water. So these properties of amino acids are commonly observed in compounds where charged species are present. Studies actually confirm that amino acids are charged species in both solid state and in solution. Looking at the general structure of an amino acid, we can see that we have a basic group. We have the amino, which is the basic group, and the carboxylic acid, which is the acid group. However, amino acids in solutions and in their solid form doesn't have this structure. What actually their structure is are charged amino group and charged carboxylate group. If you will notice here in the basic group, we have a protonated um, amino group and we have a carboxylate group which is deprotonated. So, this structure of amino acids are what we call zwitter ions. Zwitter ions are molecules that has a positive charge on one atom and a negative charge on another atom, but which has no net charge. So the structure of the amino acid in solution varies also with the pH of the solution. So let us take a look into this example. Now the figure on the left is the zwitter ion. And it has no net charge because it has a positively charged group and a negatively charged group. And if we add it all up, it will be a no net charge or a zero net charge. Now, when this zwitter ion is placed in an acidic solution, so when the solution's pH is lowered, making it acidic by adding an acid or a source of hydronium ions or hydrogen ions, like for example, hydrochloric acid, the carboxylate group or the COO minus group of the sweeter ion can pick up a proton to form the COOH or the carboxylic acid. So from here, you can see that the sweeter ion form from a zero net charge has now become a charged species having a positive net charge because the solution's pH is lowered. Now, what about if the pH of the solution is increased or it is in a basic solution? So, when the pH of the solution is increased by adding a base or hydroxy for the OH group, the amino group bearing the positive charge in the Zwitter ion will lose a proton. So, it will be deprotonated. And so, it will now be converted into a negatively charged species. Amino acids are in solution. It actually exists in three different forms. So we have the zwitter ion, the negative ion, and the positive ion. So at a pH of 7, a neutral pH, the amino acid exists in its zwitter ion form. So these three forms or species are in equilibrium with each other and the equilibrium shifts when pH changes. So for example, when you lower the pH, the Zwitter ion form will now be converted into um, a positively charged species or an amino acid that has a positive net charge. And when we increase the pH or when the amino acid is placed in a basic solution, its net charge is now negative. And the amino acid on the right predominates. Now here are the guidelines for the amino acid form depending on pH. So at low pH, all acid groups are protonated. And all amino groups are protonated as well. So therefore, um, the amino acid will exist or will have a positive net charge. A pH, all acid groups are deprotonated and all amino groups are also deprotonated. So that means at high pH basic solution, the net charge of the amino acid is negative. At 
pH, all acid groups are deprotonated, and all amino groups are protonated. So therefore, it exists in its zwitter ion form. The previous representation of the forms of the amino acids, depending on pH, assumed that the amino acid is a neutral one. So we have the polar neutral amino acids and the non-polar neutral amino acids. Now what about the basic and acidic amino acids? So in this case, the side chains can also be protonated or deprotonated. So therefore, acidic and basic amino acids have four charged forms in solution. So this one shows the four forms of aspartic acid, an example of an acidic amino acid. So since aspartic acid is an acidic amino acid, so we expect that it's in its Zwitter ion form, the pH of the solution is already acidic or mod moderately low, but it exists in its Zwitter ion form. Now, when we try to lower the pH, okay, so a much lower pH, what predominates is an amino acid or its form, which has a positive net charge. Now, the isoelectric point is the pH at which an amino acid has a net charge of zero. And as you can see from the table on the right, these are the isoelectric points of the 20 amino acids commonly found in proteins. 